How you doing? I'm Ronnie Santmeyer. It's been a long time. I've been busy uh, between live gigs and mixing a couple projects. I just finished um, a buddy Dennis Shockett's album, Weather Vane. Um, I'll put a link. Please check that out on Spotify. And then uh, my good buddy Nick Bertling has a new album coming out, and I just finished mixing that album for him. And both of those albums were mastered down in uh, Virginia by Greg Lukens, um, which he made my work sound great. Um, so I'm going to show an example here of the West Audio NG Leveler because a couple of people have been asking me about it. So I finally got one a while back. I did some beta testing, I guess you could call it, with uh, Mikel, if that's how he says his name correctly, um, at West Audio. And um, we went back and forth in emails because I was having some issues with Reaper and my X-Touch controlling it. Um, it's kind of cool. Once you get it set up, you basically can have your control surface controlling your doll and controlling that, and you can just toggle with a switch in between them, similar to the way the SSL, AWS, and Dualities flip between controlling the analog faders and controlling uh, faders for the you know control surface of the doll. Anyway, I just thought I'd grab just a couple tracks out of one. And Dennis did an acoustic song on his album, um, but I only grabbed the acoustics, kind of a bass, and uh, that was actually done on acoustic, not a real bass, and a vocal. I just took it out of the folder just to use for an example because I thought it was an easy way to show what this thing does because some people still don't understand it. So let me fire up Reaper real quick. So to do this correctly, let me undo this real quick. And the reason I'm redoing this is because I filmed this stupid thing. This is how out of practice I've been doing videos. I filmed it, started putting everything in DaVinci and realized I didn't autofocus my camera. So the camera is blurry the whole time. Uh, and then I changed my levels of something I was doing to OBS. It's, it's a lot of work. Um, anyway, so you have a song here. Let me just play a little bit real quick. I wasn't angry when I left for the... So I just dumped in this acoustic guitar and then his vocal. I don't remember trading blows. Obviously, it's not really stereo. It's just how I dumped it out of this mix session that I had. I just kind of dumped the stems down just to use it as an example. Um, so they're already slightly EQ'd, obviously. And then there's another guitar that comes in. And I did this stem because the bass, this song was kind of a rough idea. And I think this was a scratch vocal, maybe on the, maybe not, I don't remember. But um, there was one song I know he did a scratch vocal and we tracked it and he liked the scratch so we kept it. I don't think it was this song, but he just picked up an acoustic. He wasn't playing his bass and he just decided kind of to do a bass on this. And I kind of beefed it up with outboard gear and then we added a little synth under it. So it was this. Um, that's what ended up going on the album, but I just dumped it the stems for this example. It was always you and me And the hard times in between Now, I don't need a compressor on the acoustics, really, but I'm, do, I'm showing this for an example. So, obviously, you're mixing, and you guys know you can put a compressor on things. You can ride your vocals up and down. And the compressor is not going to change because it's on the insert. Okay, now what if you want to use some hardware? So uh, the vocal, let's say, and I'm just so you know, also, I'm stemming this out to show this example. I'm going out to a dangerous, I have a full chrome that I use for summing, and I have a dangerous D box. Right now, I'm just currently using the couple channels of the D box. So I got the guitars going through channels one and two, the bass going, actually, even though it's stereo, I'm going out in mono. Uh, on channel seven of the D box and then mono on the vocal, channel eight on the D box, just for these examples. So if I solo the vocal, it it's going to show up just on channel eight. You and me. So let's say you wanted to patch in like an LA2A on this vocal. So um, currently, right now, I'm coming out at NG Leveler, but we're going to change that. Let's do this. 
this. Um, come out of channel 10, into my LA-2A, out of my LA-2A, into the dangerous D-Box. This will kick in. Let me just solo the vocal. It was always As you see, you and me and the hard times in between. Hopefully you can see that. Delicate so, flowers are we. I'm pushing into it. And as you know, if you back off the output of your fader, then it's gonna back off what comes out of your interface, meaning backing off your compressor. It was always. So obviously I just turned it down, but look, there's no compression. If I want to turn the vocal up, times in between. I'm pushing too hard into the compressor. And that was always a problem with mixing on these summing boxes. I mean, there were so many summing boxes out nowadays. And the Sigma is one of the only ones I know that has automation built in. Um, the SSL Matrix console can do this because it acts like a line mixer with automation. And uh, um, Audient used to make a really cool mixer called the Zen or something like that that did the same thing and then they sold the rights to Focusrite and it was called the 2880 or whatever. Incorporating this NG leveler in between your, out, your, your converters and your um, summing box is not that beneficial if you're literally just coming out of the box and you're doing your automation in the computer, you don't really need outboard faders. But when you're a person who has a lot of outboard gear, especially compressors, that change when you change the levels in the box, that item was useful. The step up on the NG leveler that I like is, and I want, I'll introduce it, I created this channel right here. It doesn't really have to be here. This channel right here is just the return, return of, the, of the dangerous D box coming back in. But if I go down to Wes Audio and I put this plug in on, this is the NG leveler. You can connect it with USB or ethernet. I, I use ethernet. Um, so you have 16 individual mono channels here or you can hit stereo and link them. So you can have a stereo channel here. Um, you can even do something like if you had a staggered thing like this, and you can lock them so they stay staggered and you just move the whole thing together. And you can reverse them so you can kind of do some crazy pan back and forth, like volume swell effects, whatever. You can even chain things together like this. So if I wanted this whole thing to ride opposite, you could. Um, you can create groups too, which is cool. He added this later. So I can go in here and group things. So if I want to pull multiple drums together in one group, I could, or several basses, guitars, whatever. The other cool thing about this stuff is um, he put the harmonic distortion in uh, that they use on all their products. I have their one compressor here um, and they do it on all their units, which is cool. It's a good sounding distortion. You got medium and high and off. So just running through this box is nice because you can add a little hair to the sound. Um, so for instance, I'm coming out channels, what is it? Seven and eight. Yeah, seven and eight for the acoustics. So if I go to seven and eight here and I hit stereo. Let's see. Um, for the promise of happiness. Yep. I don't remember. Trading blows. All right, so the, the guitar is in there now. Now, the problem with the vocals uh, and the compressor I just showed you. Let's go back to that second. My volume changing is riding that compressor, and we don't want that. We want that vocal to stay locked and steady with compression. So let me turn this down. Let me set this. For the promise of happiness. Don't remember. So let's say I like that the way it is, but I don't want to mess it up. So here's what I'm going to change. I'm going to come out of my interface into the LA-2A like I'm currently doing, but instead of going back into the D-Box out of the LA-2A, I'm going to go into the NG Leveler channel 10 up here. Then I'm going to come channel 10 out of the NG Leveler into that D-Box now. So now I'm putting a volume, like a fader in between. Let me open the software back up. For the prime. And then what I can do is I can go here. Uh, 
for the promise. Yeah, I can solo. Well, the bass is not there yet. And here's it. Here's the distortion if I add it. Trading blows. It's a little subtle in that medium. Just the sadness. Hear it there. Letting go. It was always you and me. And the hard times. Just add a little hair. Now, the real thing here is if you were doing a lot of automation in a bigger session, and again, you have a lot of outboard compressors going, and you want to ride some stuff, you can ride this here. Now watch the, watch the, the you see I'm turning down, and we're not losing gain, obviously, because we're going there first. So that you don't lose your compression settings. Just the and I can turn it up here. Of letting go. Let's see the bass. It was always you and me and the hard times in between. So let's say we wanted to add some life to that bass. We'll come out channel nine. Let's just go into a distressor because it's visibly easy for you to see, I hope, on the phone. And then we're going to go back into nine of the NG leveler. And let's play with the bass a second. Same thing. Now, if I turn this bass up and down, you can see it's not changing the level going to the distressor. Delicate flowers are we so, let's say now we want to automate this. Now, the SSL one they, they came out with, they had different plugins you put on every individual channel, what you were automating. I kind of like that this is in one whole plugin, so I can just pop open the whole plugin and see all the channels I'm looking at at once. And it keeps it convenient and it keeps it a little less clutter because any automation we, we're going to do, we can put on this track. Now, this is kind of a dummy track. There's no audio on this track. So I can drag it wherever I want. So if I wanted to sit right next to the bass while I'm automating the bass, I could do that and I could drag it somewhere else. If, you know, in a big session, if this is all the way at the end of the session, but you wanted to automate it on, you know, even a kick drum, you can move it all the way up to the top of the session or wherever your kick drum is. So let's, um, we know the, the bass is on nine, so let's, let's automate nine for a second. Let's just say for some reason we wanted it to get quieter in this one spot and then get loud again. I think it's just gonna do a quick little dip. Let's do it this way. Um, I'm doing sloppy automated thing here. All right. So let's watch this here. Oh, right here. It was always you and me and the hard times in between. Delicate. And let's say for some reason when it comes back up, we want to come up a little bit louder. And then come back down. Times in between. Death. Yep, there you go. And the hard times in between. Let's um let's do the vocal too, which is on channel ten. And let's say the vocal. It's going to be just a tiny bit quieter in the beginning and then get a little bit louder when it comes in. No biggie. So let's see how that goes. It's the sadness of letting go. It was always you and me. And see, the compressors don't and the change. hard times in between. Delic and the interesting thing is you got... Like I said, you have the harmonic distortion you can add. Gives you another color palette type thing to use in your mix. But you can also, um, let me see. Yep, you can choose over here. Um, obviously, you can mute things. 
It's important. Um, and then, um, what else am I beginning? Oh, um, the pad, you can pad things. Um, and uh, the harmonic distortion. So that's all automated. So you could actually kick in the, the, the saturation for an effect in a certain part of the song if you wanted to. The other thing is, um, which is nice, is after you've done this automation and you realize, oh, I made, you know, I might want to change something. You can hit the trim mode. The sadness. I can pull that Let vocal back go. a little bit. It was always you and so the me. bass is too loud. And the hard times in. So the automation doesn't change, but I changed the trim because I wanted to offset that a little bit. And again, you close the session up, you reopen it. This is memorized because it's just a plug-in talking to that through Ethernet or USB. Um, and it doesn't just stop it mixing. Um, if you have a summing box you're doing this, you could literally, and I've done this with uh, just tracking guitars where I might have like three to four microphones on the guitar. I could have two in the cabinet, two in a room, or even a, you know acoustic guitars, whatever. Your microphones are going into your mic pre's. Your mic pre's can run into the NG leveler, out of the NG leveler, um, either straight into your DAW if you just wanted to use them for volume controls behind the compressor. I mean, behind the uh, mic pre, you can do that. But you can run them into a, um, a summing box. So if you wanted to just merge all those, you know, that, that guitar to one track, mono or stereo, but that way you have faders because maybe you don't have a console in your studio. Well, you can just sit there with your control surface talking to that and basically blend the mics how you want them. Um, or imagine you got 16 ins and outs on that box and you have 16 mic pre's and you have a drummer, bass player and a, and a guitar player in your live room and you're just going to do some rough, you know, basics. You can run all the mics through your mic pre's, get your levels, put them into the NG leveler, then go to your DAW and then that way you have faders and you can basically balance the mix right there, almost like a real console, before it even hits your converters. And then again, you can pop in this distortion, the harmonic distortion, on different channels to give a little flavor. Maybe you have some transformerless mic pre's mixed with, you know, Neve and API style and you want to add a little hair to them, a little life to the more boring mic pre's. Pop the distortion in, can add some color, ride your levels, print it, done. Um, so the box, not just for mixing, you can you can use it for a lot of things. It's pretty cool. Uh, but I just wanted to do a quick rundown on how that works for the people who kept asking me. I don't understand what's the point of it. Well, that's the point. Being able to control volumes mostly when you're mixing after your compressor so you don't disturb your threshold that you've tweaked or whatever. And and, um, and again, it'll tracking, using it for inputs. Um, again, there's some mic pre's like the old APIs that only have an input that don't have an output fader. You could use this as your output trim. You can crank the input on that mic pre, come into here. You can even hit the pad button on here to turn the volume down a little bit and then have a fader to control what goes to your doll. And then again, add the harmonic distortion. So the box can do multiple things. It's, it's pretty cool and it gets overlooked, I think. It's why there's not many YouTube videos on it. So hopefully this gets out there and people find it interesting. Um, thanks a lot. And please check out uh, Dennis Shockett's Weather Vane on Spotify and Nick Bertling's album coming out on Spotify as well soon and Bandcamp on both those guys. But thanks for checking us out and uh, hope you enjoyed it. Talk to you soon.